Hello everyone and welcome as you join us. Uh, I have the opportunity today to share a few words with you today on behalf of both PIPS and the Southern Area Mental Health Services as well. Particularly today we are looking at God's Word as a source of strength, healing and support particularly today reaching out to those who are suicidal or those family members or loved ones or friends of people who have uh, passed away by suicide and we're looking at God's health and strength in all of that speaking into our lives with peace mercy and grace and healing I want to use today words from Psalm 22 and the Psalms are wonderful in the Bible as they are very human words in many ways. Many of them written by King David of the Old Testament and they speak of nearly every human emotion and human experience in life and in there we can find God speaking to us through his word. I'm going to read some verses from the Psalm and then going to tell you a story first uh, it happened to myself uh, in the past and we'll see what God is saying through his word today from there Psalm 22 several verses from uh, that chapter in the Bible my God my God why have you forsaken me why are you so far from saving me so far from the words of my groaning. O my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and I am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not disappointed. He trusts in the Lord, let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. For he has not despised or disdain the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. And may God bless his word to us today. The story I want to tell you uh, goes back to the 5th of September 1983 and that is if my mouth is right it's 37 years ago this week just passed and I remember our first pet family dog she was a lovely golden Labrador called Cindy and we had Cindy for about nine years and I don't remember her not being about our home as a young boy I remember my father bringing her in his pocket vaguely to the door as a little child and she was with us into my teenage years. But uh, sadly Cindy took ill. We didn't know it at the time. She was putting on weight and we actually thought she was pregnant with puppies at one stage as there were other dogs about uh, in the area and been running in out of our yard as well. But she started to slow up a lot and put on an awful lot of weight. My mother particularly was worried about her and took her to the vet one day and I was with her. But unfortunately for Cindy, uh, she was riddled with cancer and had to be put down. And the vet did the necessary thing that day, the 5th of September, 1983. And never forget the date of uh, that particular occasion. And as a child, as a young person, those occasions do stick with you forever. But what I glean from that is things happen very suddenly in life at times. Sometimes we don't know what is around any corner. 
We didn't know our dog was ill at all until we took her to the vet. And then there was a real uh, brick wall, if you will, that you ran into when you heard that she had to be put down suddenly and without any preparation. And all the emotions that come with that in the fallout of that as well. The words today from Psalm 22 are words of the depth of people's hearts crying out to God. They are words of turmoil, words of deep despair. And it speaks of the human heart crying out to God, our creator, and where he might be in situations where all of a sudden our life is turned on its head and forever. We think particularly of people who have lost loved ones and mainly because of this particular broadcast today through suicide, both in the past and recently. And the fallout to those left behind, family, friends, colleagues, neighbours, different people who have lost loved ones through suicide. The opening words of the psalm, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And these are the very words that Jesus used on the cross when he was carrying the sin of the world. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's called the cry of dereliction from the cross, that he was totally alone or felt alone when he was dying on the cross, that God had somehow turned his back on him. God the Father had turned away. Not because he was forsaking his son, but because God in his purity and holiness could not face sin that was sitting on his son's shoulders at that time. And therefore Jesus felt that he was alone. Sometimes we might cry out these words as well when we walk through a path of grief or loss. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? Why has this happened? Will you walk with me? Where are you? Please help me. And we've maybe tried every other avenue in life as well. But yet we do cry out to God when everything else does fail before us as well. And yet we may feel that even God is failing us. That we come to that last part of our tether. Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groaning. You can imagine the depth here of the psalmist as he speaks. It's really guttural. It's really from the depths of his being as he cries out. He's crying out by day. He hears no answer. He's crying out by night. And he is not silent, but still is getting no answer from God in his situation. But yet he knows who God is. You are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted and they also believed in you and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. Here the psalmist is saying, listen, in the past, God, you looked after my ancestors. You looked after others. You are God, but where are you? Where are you when I need you now? You see, when trouble comes to our own door, when loss comes to our own door, those are unique individual shoes that we walk. Yes, we can sympathise with others who are going through it, or we've been with others in the past who have been through this, but when it comes to ourselves, it's a very different path. Even if we do have faith in the Lord, we may find at times that Others may be looking to us for strength. Even though we're going through the same situation, others, maybe in our family or our friend's circle, whatever it might be, may look to us for strength if we have faith, but yet we are carrying that burden as well. The words from verse 8, He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. In other words, where is God? You're the person of faith. Where is he in my situation as well as yours. 
And we can think like that sometimes too in our path of loss. We see that the psalmist continues. He knows that God is his creator. You brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. See, he recognises his creator. Don't be far away. There is trouble here and there's no one to help. Nobody else could help him through this situation. Perhaps that's where many of us are today too. Hopefully we have good support networks in a time of loss and grief and bereavement, particularly through suicide. But sometimes we may feel we're really on our own and there's no one to help. Even though we recognise God, our creator, and perhaps we have faith in him, but yet he seems far away. But you, O Lord, says the psalmist, be not far off, be close. O my strength, come quickly to help me. The crying out again from the heart's cry. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. It's here the psalmist gets particular in his situation. In verse 11, he says, trouble is near. But now it's specific. The life he wants delivered from the sword, from the power of the dogs, from the mouth of the lions, from the horns of the wild oxen. Those are all nasty things. They are specific. Whatever our specific loss is today, God can minister into it. The last couple of verses we're going to look at before we finish are words of strength and encouragement and peace and words that tell us that God is always near. Yes, he wants us to cry out to him. He wants us to be real before him. He doesn't want us bottling anything up. He wants us to be real before him. And it is very right to cry out before God. With everything in our hearts and lives. He wants to see us and our situation in its total, brutal and real reality. These last couple of verses, I hope and pray they are words of comfort and hope at this time. God has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. God's ears are bigger than any of us can imagine. He hears everything. Yes, we might get the answers we want. We might never get them the way we want them. But he's listening. He wants to say, I'm walking with you today. Put your hand in mine. Seek me. Seek my word. Seek my strength. Seek my healing. Seek my peace. It is there. Do seek it. Finally, the poor will eat and be satisfied. And that's not just poor in poverty terms, in the sense of money. It's poor of spirit. Poor of emotion. Poor of strength. But they will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. Seek the Lord and he will satisfy us. And finally, the eternal picture. May your hearts live forever, the psalmist says. I hope and pray, wherever we are today in our faith measures, whether we have one or not, or whether we have one that comes and goes, may our hearts live forever. May we trust in the Lord completely with our faith, giving our all to him, walking with him in strength in difficult times of loss. Knowing that God knows every heart and soul, he knows the heart of those who are suicidal, those who have passed away by suicide, and those who grieve because of it. Only God knows the heart and soul of any person at any time. It's not for us to judge ever. Only he knows the heart and the soul at any time. And he encourages us to put our faith and trust in him, that he is walking with us. And when we cry out, he does hear. And I 
hope and pray that we get healing and comfort and strength. He promises it. I pray we find it and know it in our lives. In these days, we see statistics of mental health itself up and down our land, and we believe it's increased because of the pandemic, amongst other things in our society. And our minds are just as important as our bodies. We're to look after both, take care of them, and take care of those who are suffering in either as well. Look out for them, walk with them, place our hands and arms around them, care for them as we can. It's not always easy to see it, but when we can, and when the person, hopefully we pray, is open to that as well, that they can find that a strength too, and find healing and peace in it. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we lift before you today all who are feeling low of spirit, particularly those who are suicidal, and for those who grieve because they have lost loved ones and friends, colleagues, neighbours through suicide. We pray, Father, that they may find words of healing, comfort and peace from you, that when they reach out, that they may cry from the bottom of their hearts and to know that you hear and to know that you're extending your hand to hold them, to care for them and to lift them up. And I pray that they will know your healing and peace, comfort and strength. Lord, we pray indeed for all who work in mental health services, particularly in the southern area and with PIPs as well. We ask you to bless their work as they reach out to those in need. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.